Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video I'm going to be talking about the books that I DNF'd in 2023. I think DNFing is a really important practice as a reader who reads a lot of books. It's part of what keeps me excited about reading because I'm not forcing myself to continue with something that I'm just not enjoying. And I, I don't know, I've, I've done a whole video about DNFing before and why I think it's valuable and important. I can link some of those videos if you're interested. But today we're going to talk about the books that I chose not to finish in 2023. I'm going to go through what those titles are. We're also going to talk a little bit about what I can take away from or what I learned from the books that I DNF'd in 2023. Did I say 2024? In 2023. The books that I DNF'd in 2023. <laughs> All right, so in 2023, I DNF'd a total of 26 books which I think is pretty par for the course for me. I don't DNF a lot most of the time. Most months it's like one book, some months it's a few, but it's not really that much. I do end up finishing the majority of the books that I start. One thing that I will note though is that this year 24 of the books that I DNF'd were books that I had for review. And part of this is probably because books that I haven't committed myself to review, if I DNF them very early on, you're probably just never going to hear about it. Like if I read the first say two or three chapters of a book and I'm not into it, I'm just going to not finish it as opposed to writing a whole review about it. Now if I read a significant amount of it, then I will actually review it. So I think that's part of why it is heavily books that I had for review. So my average number of books DNF per month is two. So going through the numbers, January was two, February three, March three, April one, May one, June two, July one, August five. And we're, August is an unusual month because I read way more than I normally do because of this readathon I was participating in. I think the most books I've ever read in a month in my life. So the fact that I did to five that month I feel like kind of balances it out. Uh, one in September, two in October, three in November, one in December. So my average DNFing is two a month, which I think is pretty reasonable. So in order, here are all the books that I DNF'd in 2023. The first one was Women Talking by Miriam Toves. This one I read 22% of before I DNF'd it. I decided to try this because I was invited to see the film version. The film was incredible. I had a great time. Highly recommend if you haven't seen the film, but I did not like the book. I was listening to the audiobook and they had a male narrator of it, which I think is a weird choice for a book about the sexual assault of women. Didn't love that. And I didn't like the way that the book was handling sexual assault and talking about it. I was really uncomfortable with it. Again, the movie, I think, seems to have fixed some of the problems with the books and improved upon it, um, but it is based on something that really happened. I, I just didn't love the book. The movie was amazing. Then I DNF'd The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. I read 45% of this. I know this is a beloved book, but I just didn't love it. I was pretty bored but I was still pushing through until there were some things that I was like, is this low-key racist? Maybe this is a reason that I can give myself to put it down and not finish it. There's this like mystical Japanese character who's called Oriental and I was like, mm, this feels vaguely weird to me and I'm bored so I didn't finish it. I DNF'd Wild Blood by Lauren Blackwood. This one uh, I was disappointed in because I had really liked her debut novel but this was rough. It was a lot to read. I read 59% of this book before DNFing it and I said in my notes it was a weird mix of trauma and insta love and then all this god stuff. It ended up being like weirdly about pushing Christianity and the amount of trauma that the main character had gone through was so much and then having this like insta love story in the midst of all of the trauma she's gone through was just I don't know I didn't mm, I didn't love it so uh unfortunately that was a no for me. I DNF'd The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This is another one that I think is very popular. I read 32% of it. Part of the problem is I think I didn't like the writing style and I was bored and because of that I was focusing a lot on the flaws in the book and I couldn't get past it. I don't remember all of the details I'll be honest but in my notes I said this seemed ableist. I probably have more detailed information in my book or beyond Goodreads which you can find. Don't care about the characters or romance, surface level characterization and world building. 
uh, I wasn't having a good time and I decided not to finish it. So your, your mileage may vary. I know a lot of people love this. I didn't. I DNF'd Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones. I read 10% of it and I said, terrible writing. I can't read this. It's very heavy handed with trying to be diverse, but in a surface level way. And there were annoying characters. I thought the premise of this was interesting with this small town teenagers doing a podcast to solve a local crime. But you know who did it much better is, um, what's her name? Um, I will find the book and I will put it right here. <laughs> but there is a book that I read that came out around the same time that took this premise but actually wrote it really well. Whereas this I just thought was very poorly written. Then oh yeah, this was terrible. This is one of the fastest books I've ever DNF. There's only like a couple books I can think of that I have DNF'd this fat quickly. But The Cherished by Patricia Ward, I read 5% of it, which means I read like a chapter and part of the second chapter and was like, oh, hell no. Just in that first chapter, I said ableist, fat phobic, racist and bad writing. Yikes. This was supposed to be a YA horror novel. And based on reviews, I don't think it got better. I just was shocked. My jaw dropped at the amount of horrible stuff in this YA book just in the first chapter. I was like, what the hell is this? So no thank you. I unfortunately ended up DNFing Solomon's Crown by Natasha Siegel. I read 41% of it and I said didn't really like it. I was bored and I found it really hard to get into it because it's kind of it kind of reads like historical fanfic which didn't work for me. If this works for you cool. Maybe work for some people but it really wasn't working for me. So I picked this up because it was historical fiction that was like putting a queer lens on um, King Philip and Richard of Aquitaine. And it's a romance between the two of them, but it's so loosely tied with history and it, re it reads like fanfic. It was weird. It was uncomfy in a weird way because they're actual historical figures. I don't know. I just, I didn't, I didn't love it and I was bored. So I was like, mm, I feel like this is just not for me. I don't know why that rubs me the wrong way, but for whatever reason, sometimes things that use real historical figures in that. I don't I don't know. Sometimes it can work, but a lot of times it just rubs me the wrong way. I DNF to the first bright thing by J.R. Dawson. And I think this just really wasn't my thing. I didn't realize <laughs> I maybe I should have. I read 46 pages of this and I was like, you know what? I am just not the person to review this book. I don't think the writing is bad, but it had all the tropes that I either dislike or I'm a really hard sell on together and it was not working for me. So it's a circus book, which is is sometimes I can like, but it's not like a go to for me. It's a time travel book, which I'm a real hard sell on. And it's set around World War Two. And I generally don't enjoy reading things set around World War Two. So I, I feel like it had a lot against it. I was very not invested in the plot. Again, your mileage on this may vary. If those things sound good to you, maybe this is the book for you. I mostly picked it up because I was like, oh, it's like a queer historical fantasy. I know it didn't work for me, unfortunately. But again, your mileage on this may vary. It specifically was things that I'm not a fan of. It's like take a shot every time I say your mileage may vary <laughs> in this video. <laughs> Oh yeah, this one I was really disappointed by. Again, I'm, I've am i seen different reviews. It just didn't work for me. I ended up DNFing Venom and Vow by Anna Marie McLemore and Elliot McLemore. I read 34% of this and I, I, yeah, I wanted to love this. I've loved a lot of other things that, that I've read from Anna Marie McLemore. This is a fantasy novel they co-wrote with their spouse and I I like the premise of this. I like what this book is trying to do. What I couldn't get past was the writing style. To me it read as really overwritten for the kind of story it was telling. And I think the thing that I've come to realize is that there's certain styles of writing that I only like in particular genres of books. So Anna Marie McLemore has always had this very flowery style and normally the books that they write are these sort of nebulous magical realism stories where that kind of writing works for me. The vibe matches this sort of poetic 
maybe overwritten style. But this book was more of a typical YA fantasy but still written in the same style and it just wasn't working for me. Again, you may have a different experience depending on your preferences, but it was purely the writing style. I liked what it was trying to do in terms of the plot and the way it dealt with gender and sexuality. I, I just, the writing, the writing. Editing Bethany here, and I realized I accidentally forgot a book, because of course I did. Um, the book that I did not yet talk about was Bitter Medicine by Mia Tsai, and this was kind of an interesting urban fantasy. I think for me, again, the writing style just really wasn't working. I liked the concept and there were parts of it that I was into, but the, the pacing of it was really slow. This is also the kind of book that I could see myself maybe having liked better if I was in a place where I had more patience as a reader. I don't feel like the timing of when I picked it up was ideal because it had some really interesting scenes and then it would kind of meander around and I just kind of got bored with it. So your experience on this could vary depending on how patient you are, but I do think it's a little bit overwritten and hey, the writing style didn't totally work for me. I DNF'd A Crown of Glass and Ivy by Claire Legrand at 27%. Oh man, uh, yeah, this was a very, very long book and I did not like the main character or the choices that she was making. This is the second book in a row for me that has been a miss by Claire Legrand and I'm so bummed about it because she's also written a couple of my favorite books of all time. But yeah, this one... <sighs> I don't know if it's the publisher or like what the book was going for, but it was weird to me because it was like this mix of a young woman dealing with really serious mental health issues and this like over the top sexiness that feels like it's pandering to TikTok readers. And I didn't want those things together. So anyway, I ended up DNFing. I DNFed A Ruinous Fate by Kaylee Smith. I read 47% of this. I said, bored, very okay, info dumping and lots of telling about the characters rather than showing who they are and their relationships to each other. It was just very fine. It wasn't a bad book. I was just bored to tears and I didn't feel like I was getting anything new from it. I decided to DNF. Oh man, the next one, like, people like to fight with me in the comments of my Goodreads review on this one. Uh, Shigiri and the Brass Head of the Obalufon by Wole Talabi. I read 43% and I ended up DNFing it. I said, misogynist, not great treatment of female character, and there's some kind of low-key fat phobia in it as well. There is a couple people who've been yelling at me in the comments section saying I shouldn't be reviewing. I didn't rate it. I just wrote a review of my experience with it. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about. You sort of shouldn't be reviewing it if you didn't finish the book. And then said, there's no fat phobia. This female character is thin. And I'm like, just because she's thin doesn't mean that there's not fat phobia. Like, oh my god. Anyway, uh, this I wanted to like, I think in theory, the idea of this kind of fantasy thing based on Nigerian mythology and gods is kind of interesting in this modern context. But there were just too many things I was uncomfy with. Again, your mileage may vary. That was my experience. I DNF'd The Archive Undying by Emma Mieko Kandon. I was also so disappointed at this. I read 51% of it. I love the cover and the premise and the first few chapters I was really into. The thing with this one, what's hard about it is that the, the writing itself on a prose level is beautiful, but this book was so confusing. I was just like struggling to get through it and understand what was going on and why things mattered and how they were connected. The ideas behind the world were really cool. I wanted to love this book, but I was so lost. I, I was like, I just, I can't, what are, what are, what, what are we doing? Maybe I, I, I don't know. I would try something else from this author in the future because I liked some of the ideas it was playing with and I liked the first part of the book, but I just couldn't deal with how lost I was. And when I read some of reviews from people who finished the book, it didn't seem like my challenges with it were suddenly going to 
be okay. Like, uh, Tamsin Muir in Harrow the Ninth, the first two thirds of that book, I was so lost and confused, but she was able to bring it all together where by the end it made sense. And I was like, oh, I get it. I see now what you were doing. And based on reviews I was reading, I didn't think that was going to happen with this book. And I was like, oh, I can't. So unfortunately, I DNF'd it. Oh yeah, I also DNF'd The Woman in the Costello by Kelsey James. I read 55% of this. I said a boring, annoying main character. And this is a, like, some of it's a little spoilery. There were some weird choices with this. Having to do with like Nazis. I don't, it was, I, and, and the decisions the main character was making as a mother, I was like, what? I, yeah, I'm usually like an easy sell on a gothic story, but this one, it was a no for me. <sighs> it's like some of these I was so bummed about. <laughs> I wanted them to be better than they were. The Duchess Effect by Tracy Livesey. I read 50% of this before I DNF'd it. I'm still sad about this because I really enjoyed the first book. And then the second book, you're continuing this relationship between this pop star and this prince. And I just, I don't know. The first one, I feel like there was a, quite a bit of sex, but there also was emotional development and depth of, to the relationship. Book two, it felt like it was just sex. I was like, where is the romance? Where's the relationship? And then the heroine is lying to him. And I, f I, I feel like this far into a relationship, for me, I can't deal with the lying. Like, that is breaking trust in a relationship in a way that for me you can't come back from where I'm not going to want the two of you together. So I ended up DNFing this. I was really bummed because I liked the first book. I wanted to like the second one but it just it was a no for me. Then I ended up DNFing The Curse of the Spectre Queen by Jenny Elder Moak. I read 50% of this and I said it's okay but I'm not that interested and it is slow for a book that I feel like should be really fast paced. It's supposed to be kind of a fantasy, female-led Indiana Jones type vibe. And I was really into the first few chapters and then it slowed way down and like nothing happened until we were like almost halfway through the book. And I was like, okay, I'm just, I don't, I don't care anymore. So I ended up DNFing it. For me, this was the pacing. So many, so many disappointments, man. Um, I ended up DNFing Forged by Blood by Higbor Okusun. Oh my god, this cover is so pretty. So pretty. And I really wanted to love this. This was this idea I left at 52%. The other thing too about this is sometimes I am more likely to DNF something by a debut author, especially a debut author of color if I'm not really liking it because I don't want to give it a low rating and bring the rating down on Goodreads, but I can't at least share my experience because other people might have different experiences. So I can, you know, that I think okay. I said this wasn't what I expected. This was sold as an adult kind of darker fantasy novel but I said very YA. I'm bored based on reviews. It doesn't seem like it's going to improve. So I was expecting something written for adults and edgier. Camera overheated and I needed to change the battery but we are back. Um, so what was I saying? So I... I thought this was going to be this really interesting adult fantasy and it ended up reading so young. And this is an issue that I personally have that I expect different things from books that are being published as YA versus books that are being published as adult fantasy. And I think if this had been published as YA fantasy and I had gone in with those expectations, I probably would have had a little more grace for it. I still wouldn't have loved it. It would have been a very middle of the road kind of YA fantasy book, but I'm expecting a little bit more depth in terms of characterization. And, and let, let me be clear, this is not to say that YA books can't have depth and amazing character work because they certainly can, but it is not something I expect from YA fantasy. Um, it's great if it's there and sometimes it is there, but I don't, I don't expect the level of depth and sophistication that I do from adult, an adult novel. And I did find out after I DNF'd it that this book had originally been developed as YA and ended up being sold as adult. And I think you can really feel that. Like, I, th I think you can't just age up a character by a couple of years and call it good, slap an adult sticker on it. There's a lot more to it that goes into this. So I think you can feel the fact that this was originally written as YA, 
and then sold as adult. So I, I ended up DNFing it. I DNF'd King Rat by China Mieville. I read 50% of it. This one was just too weird for me. I, I like the concept. I think what he's doing is really interesting. The writing is 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 good, but it was it was too bizarre. And I was like, I this is so weird. It's just like not enjoyable for me, even though I respect what he's doing. It's I think considered one of the first urban fantasy books about this guy who is literally the son of a rat. And it's, I mean, it's interesting. Conceptually, it's really interesting. The idea of like the the role that rats have in large cities and I, I don't know, but it was, it was weird. <laughs> I was like, eh, I think this is not, not my thing. I DNF'd Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher at 44%. I just said I was bored. This was supposed to be a queer YA romance that's retelling the Arthurian legends. And that's kind of true, although it's sort of their descendants years down the road. It, it was it was fine. Some people have been loving this, though. So take my feelings with a grain of salt, because I know some people who thought it was just really fun and entertaining. It, di it didn't work for me. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, this one I was I this is another one that I was bummed, but I should have known better. <laughs> This is like a me thing, okay? I ended up DNFing Into the Bright Open by Sherry Demoline at 50%. Again, because I was just really bored with it, but I, I should have known. So this is part of the Remix Classic series, and this is a remix of The Secret Garden, but from the perspective of an indigenous young woman. I didn't like The Secret Garden. I was bored to tears by The Secret Garden. So why did I think that the this remix would be something I would like? It wasn't. I was also pretty bored by it. I like what she's doing. <laughs> like, I think conceptually it's more interesting, but I got 50% the way through and I'm like, oh my god, I, it's like so hard to force myself to keep reading. Not because the writing is bad, but just because the story is not interesting to me. So if you love The Secret Garden, you should absolutely go and read this book. I didn't and I should have known better. Then I DNF'd All the Right Notes by Dominic Lim at 150 pages. Mm. This, okay, this was supposed to be this like fun, joyous, queer rom-com type thing. It was not, it was not fun or joyous. I didn't like the main character. Also, he was pretty depressed for a lot of the book. And there's a cheating plot line, which I don't like. I don't, I, d I don't like books that justify our main character cheating with the love interest because their significant other is an asshole. And that is what this book was doing. It, mm, no. I liked the Filipino representation. It also had like weird misogynistic elements to it. I don't know. There was a lot of stuff that I was like, ew, I don't know about this. Unfortunately, not for me. I DNF'd The Night Hunt by Alexandra Cristo at 88 pages, also because I was bored. Are we seeing a theme here? If I am bored, I don't want to keep going with the book because it's hard to keep myself reading. I want to be interested and having fun or at least finding something thought provoking. If I am bored, I'm probably going to DNF it. The thing with The Night Hunt too is that it was pitched as this like dark fantasy romance with this morally gray female main character. But but as somebody who's supposed to be like morally gray at best, she's very Mary Sue. <laughs> it was just so bland. It was very exactly what I expect from a YA fantasy book. I, if you haven't read a lot of those, maybe you would like it better. I don't, I don't know. I just, there was nothing interesting about it. The world building was like, okay. The character work was mm, okay. None of it was bad, but it was, nothing like nothing interesting or unique really and just kind of bland <sighs> okay we're down to the last three almost there i dnf'd courting samira by amala wad i read 70 pages of this one and this one i think is very much a personal thing i had this for review so this is a contemporary romance following a more conservative muslim main character who is finding love here's the thing i don't have any kind of commentary to give on other people's 
religious beliefs and backgrounds or how they choose to live those out. If it's working for them, the that's fine. So this is nothing to say about Islam in particular, but as somebody who is a former Christian evangelical who grew up with purity culture, there was a lot of specific details in this book that were very reminiscent of the American Christian purity culture I grew up in. They're not the same thing. I'm not calling them one to one. I'm not saying this book is bad. What I am saying is that there were so many, there were enough similarities that I found it kind of triggering in a way that I didn't really want to read. And and so this is supposed to be a contemporary rom-com. If I'm reading a romance, I want it to be fun and light. And for me, it wasn't because of my own background. So your mileage on this really may vary. But I would say if you have the same kind of religious trauma as I do, maybe steer clear of this one. Then I DNF to The Sun and the Void by Gabriella Romero LaCruz at 170 pages. I, okay, so I waited a long time to read this because there had been so much discourse about it. And I was like, well, let me wait a while and then let me try it and see what I think. I will say 170 pages in up to that point, a lot of the criticisms I had heard about it I, I wouldn't say I agreed with. Maybe the rest of the book has some of those things. I didn't agree with most of them. And I found the characters interesting. I thought the world was really interesting. And I liked the way that it was using things metaphorically to talk about larger issues in Latin America. The thing that I ended up DNFing it for is really just in the last couple chapters that I read as we're heading into part two is for plot reasons, there is the killing of a bunch of babies and that doesn't happen on page. It's not graphic, but it's kind of glossed over. <laughs> like, not that I think the author thinks it's not a big deal, but it's, it's like the killing was just kind of thrown in there to move the plot forward in a way that I was really uncomfortable with. I felt like we weren't taking seriously the impact of what these characters were doing. I just didn't, I didn't like it. It's not that I wanted it to be more graphic. I just wanted to feel some of the emotional weight of what they were doing and it felt like we were just skipping right past that. And I, for me that was a, an issue that I was like, I don't know if I can get past this. I, I think I'm gonna stop here. So I did. Lastly, I DNF'd Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mohanty at 79%. Whew, boy, this one. Okay, so there are some positives here. I think the concept is an interesting one. This is supposed to be a dark political fantasy version of the Mahabharata, uh, which I think is cool conceptually. Some of the world building elements are pretty interesting. However, up to about where I ended up DNFing it, I was not super enjoying it, but I was going to finish it. I had intended to finish it. I thought that the pacing wasn't great. The writing was kind of dense. It's a little bit overwritten and info dumpy at times and very uneven in terms of parts of it being interesting and parts of it not being interesting. I also didn't think he'd done a very good job with most of the female characters. A lot of them really lack agency and don't have a lot of depth to their characterization. So those were negatives. I don't know that I would have given this book a really high rating, but I was going to finish it. And then we started getting casual sexual violence against women that kept ramping up to the point of having a really graphic rape scene in it. And at that point I decided I was done. So I DNF'd at 79% because of that. Heads up that that is in there. And I don't think it was handled well. I'm not a person who thinks that you can never have sexual assault on page in a book. But I think if you're going to do it, don't just throw it in there for shock value. You need to do a good job with it. And this was not done well at all. It was just like, look how grimdark my fantasy is because a woman's getting raped. And I'm like, no, dude. And this is the thing. So it it is very clear in different elements of characters and plot that he's drawing on inspiration from people like Joe Abercrombie and George R. R. Martin. The thing with Joe Abercrombie is though, he writes grimdark fantasy, but there is not graphic sexual assault on page. And he said that like, if that's what you're doing to make 
people realize that you're writing grimdark that's just lazy writing which I think is true not that it doesn't happen but just reinforcing misogyny and sexual violence against women it doesn't make it uh, like edgy and grimdark and the thing is with all the misogyny in the book is that the characters weren't well built enough for me to be able to tell that the misogyny was coming from specific characters because of who they are and their beliefs it was just kind of like in there so I don't know I don't know what the author thinks about women that may not have been intentional and may just have been sloppy writing but I was not a fan and I ended up DNFing this one so those are all of the books that I DNF'd in 2023. I think the top two reasons that I'll DNF a book are, like I said, being bored. Like if I'm bored and I'm not having a good time, I probably don't want to finish. And number two, the writing style just really not working for me. This doesn't happen frequently, but sometimes the genre and the writing style are just not working for me. Or it's because it's doing a thing that I find kind of triggering in a way that I don't like or offensive in a way that I don't like. So, you know, like poorly handled misogyny and sexual assault, um, poorly handled killing of babies. Those, those are the sorts of things that will make me DNF a book, which personally I think is is pretty reasonable. So talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know, do you DNF books? And if so, what are some of the reasons that you might choose not to finish a book? I think that it can be a really helpful practice as a reader, but let me know how you approach it in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.